At five foot three inches tall, Muggsy Bogues defied what was believed to be humanly possible. He overcame extreme poverty to come out on the other side and excel in the NBA. He could very well be the greatest underdog in sports history. And this is his story. Tyrone Muggsy Bogues was born in Baltimore, Maryland. He was the youngest of four children. His father, Richard, was a five foot four dock worker and his mother, Elaine, stood at just four feet, 11 inches. Bogues grew up in the challenging environment of the Lafayette public housing projects. His family faced economic hardships in a neighborhood that was constantly plagued by violence and danger. In fact, Bogues claimed that those who grew up in the Lafayette projects didn't even expect to live past 20 years old. At just five years old, Muggsy became a victim of gun violence when he was caught in the crossfire of a robbery. The incident left him with injuries to his arms, chest, and head. But luckily, he was able to make a full recovery. But once again at the wrong place, at the wrong time. Muggsy as a young child witnessed a man getting beaten to death with a baseball bat a memory that continued to traumatize him as an adult. Only a few years later, his father was incarcerated on an armed robbery charge when Muggsy was just 12 years old. Meanwhile, his older brother Chucky was heavily addicted to hard drugs. These circumstances were the neighborhood standard. Muggsy refused to become a victim of the harsh streets of Baltimore. Instead, Muggsy became obsessed with basketball. He and his friends used makeshift basketball nets crafted from open bottom milk crates hung on fences. The conditions were far from glamorous, but they instilled Muggsy with the grit and hunger that fueled him throughout his journey. During his milk crate basketball days, Leon Howard, a coach who recognized his potential, guided him toward organized sports. He initially enrolled at Baltimore Southern High School, but transferred over to Dunbar High School a school known for their renowned basketball program. Surprisingly, the reason Muggsy transferred actually had nothing to do with basketball. At the time, the NBA was beyond his wildest dreams. Instead, he aspired to be a dental technician and Dunbar High School offered classes that specialized in healthcare. With that being said, Muggsy was well aware of the program at Dunbar and was hoping that if he could excel on the basketball court, he could earn himself a college scholarship to pay for his education. At first impression, no one took Muggsy Bogues seriously. He was always the shortest kid in the gym and was regularly bullied and overlooked. Muggsy would often come home crying to his mom after being harassed and name called because he was so short. But his mom pushed him to persevere, teaching him that what he lacked in height, he could make up for in heart. Dunbar High School was packed with talent. The program was led by a revered high school coach named Bob Wade. Other future NBA players, including David Wingate, Reggie Lewis, and Reggie Williams also attended Dunbar at the same time as Muggsy. But it didn't take long before they began recognizing that Bogues had some serious skill. One of the team's star players, senior Dwayne Woods, dubbed Bogues with the nickname Muggsy because his sticky defense was reminiscent of a burglar, and Muggsy was ready to show the rest of the nation what he was made of as well. But before continuing with Muggsy's story, we ask you to like this video and subscribe to Legends Media, because we plan to make even more videos about sports' greatest heroes. Thanks guys. Now, back to Muggsy. During the 1981-82 season, the team's biggest game of the year was against the Camden High Panthers, the top-ranked high school team in the nation. Camden had been nearly invincible on their home court, with only one loss in five years. As Muggsy was introduced in the starting lineup at 5'3", the entire Camden High gym erupted in laughter. Even the Camden star player, Billy Thompson, was laughing at the 16-year-old guard so Muggsy was determined to get the last laugh. He took over the game with his speed and tenacity, leading Dunbar to an overwhelming 84-59 victory. After the game, the crowd was chanting, Muggsy, Muggsy, Muggsy. Oh, and that was just the start. In his junior and senior years, Dunbar won 59 consecutive games, 
earning the Poets national recognition as the top-ranked high school team in the United States. The Dunbar High Poets won back-to-back -back championships, and despite playing alongside three future NBA players, Muggsy was named the most valuable player on his team and in the city's public school league. He was heavily recruited by some of the nation's most sought-after programs, including Georgetown, Virginia, Penn State, and Seton Hall. But Muggsy Bogues ultimately decided to commit to Wake Forest University and become a Demon Deacon. When he arrived at Wake Forest, Bogues encountered a contrasting environment to the one he had grown up in. The affluent surroundings and heightened academic rigor made it difficult for the young man to find comfort. For these reasons, Muggsy's freshman year in college was extremely challenging. But as usual, Muggsy pushed through and eventually found his way, despite facing doubts and scrutiny based on his lack of size. During his sophomore season, Wake Forest played against the second-ranked Duke Blue Devils. Duke fans taunted Muggsy throughout the game by chanting, Stand up. Once again, Muggsy got the last laugh after locking down Duke star Johnny Dawkins while also contributing 12 points en route to a 91-89 overtime upset for the Deacons. Ernie Nestor, the man who recruited him to Wake Forest, claimed that Muggsy activates the greatest fear a guard has, to be stripped at half court in front of God and the whole world. In his junior year, the Demon Deacons brought in a new head coach, Bob Stock. That gave Muggsy the opportunity to further blossom. The coach-player dynamic proved to be a catalyst for Muggsy's success. In his junior year, he averaged 11.6 points per game and led the Atlantic Coast Conference in steals. He was ranked top 10 in assists in the entire nation and broke the all-time ACC record by recording 17 assists in a single game. He even managed to rank top three in rebounding amongst point guards in the major conference. The reason Muggsy was so able to dominate, despite his height, was because he didn't see it as a disadvantage. In fact, he viewed basketball completely differently than the other players on the court. In Muggsy's eyes, only a small portion of the game is played in the air. For the most part, the game is played on the ground, and he called the floor Muggsy Land. As long as the ball was being dribbled, he made it his sole purpose to dominate. With speed, quickness, tenacity, precision, heart, and ferocity, Muggsy Bogues regularly made life miserable for his opponents. The highlights of his college career came when he was selected for the U.S. national team in 1986. With Muggsy as the point guard, the United States won the World Championship title in Malaga, Spain for their first time in 30 years. In January of 1987, he entered his senior year at Wake Forest loaded with confidence. He set a school record with 579 assists in his senior year, which allowed him to set a new ACC record with 781 career assists. He also led the ACC in steals and minutes played while leading Wake Forest in scoring. His achievements during his senior year extended to being named to the All-ACC team. Years later, Wake Forest retired his number 14 and hung it from the rafters. And to this day, in 2023, Tyrone Muggsy Bogues remains Wake Forest's all-time leader in both steals and assists. Take that, Chris Paul. Following his college career in 1987, Muggsy entered the NBA draft, taking his first step towards realizing his lifelong dream. As usual, he faced plenty of scrutiny going into the draft based on his stature. Dominating college was one thing, but the NBA was a whole other story. At the time, the average height of an NBA player was 6 foot 7. The shortest player to ever play was a 5 foot 6 guard from New York named Melvin Hirsch, way back in the 1940s. Needless to say, the odds were stacked against Muggsy. But still, the Washington Bullets selected him as the 12th overall pick in the draft, much higher than what was expected. His 12th pick undoubtedly raised eyebrows across the league. Many people actually thought that the Bullets selected Muggsy as a publicity stunt. They already rostered Minute Bowl, who was the tallest player in the NBA, at 7'1". The odd pair were featured on magazine covers across the country, 
but Washington fans doubted that their circus squad could find real success on the basketball court. The rookie season began with promise, as Muggsy started in the Bullets' first preseason game. However, his initial campaign was challenging, and included a coaching change partway through. Wes Unseld took over for Kevin Lowry mid-season, and Muggsy was immediately placed in the doghouse. By season's end, he finished with an average of 5 points, 5.1 assists, and 1.6 steals per game. Washington fans were unimpressed, and blamed management for not drafting Mark Jackson, a 6'1 point guard who was selected by the Knicks 18th overall and ended up winning the Rookie of the Year award. Instead of sticking to their guns, the Bullets opted to expose Muggsy to the expansion draft in 1988. They were ready to cut ties and admit their mistake to their pissed off fan base, before even giving Muggsy a real opportunity to show his worth. After the Charlotte Hornets selected Muggsy in the expansion draft, he held no hostility towards the Bullets. He just expressed gratitude and went about his business as usual. Even though the team had a losing record in their first year, the Hornets still led the league in attendance, drawing near-capacity crowds for home games. Dick Harder, the Hornets' initial head coach, utilized Muggsy off the bench as a change of pace energy player. But a coaching change in January 1990 brought Gene Littles into the helm, which provided him the opportunity he had been waiting for to showcase his talents as a starter. During the 1989-90 season, Muggsy Bogues averaged 9.4 points, 10.7 assists, 2 steals, and only 1.8 turnovers per game. Still, the Hornets struggled as a team, only winning 19 games all season. All the losing gave the Hornets the opportunity to select some highly touted prospects. They added future All-Stars Larry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning to the team through the draft, and eventually became a force to be reckoned with. The trio shared unbelievable chemistry, making them one of the most electrifying teams in the NBA. By this time, Alan Bristow was the team's head coach, while Muggsy served as the team's on-floor general and fan favorite, leading their up-tempo attack. The 1992-93 Hornets entered the playoffs as the fifth seed, and even knocked off the Boston Celtics by a series score of 3-1 in the first round. Then, in the second round, they were defeated by the Knicks. In 1995, after a year-long hiatus, the Hornets once again returned to the playoffs, where they were matched up in the first round against the Chicago Bulls. Michael Jordan made his triumphant return to basketball after a short stint as a baseball player, and the series received plenty of national attention. Muggsy Bogues proved his talent and grit, despite being disrespected by Jordan, who famously referred to Bogues as a midget throughout the series. In the final game of the series, Bogues famously stripped Jordan, but was called for a highly disputed foul that could have been the difference in the game. Then, in the final moments, he was left open for the game-winning shot by Jordan, who dared him to shoot. Bugs bricked the shot off of the back rim, and the Hornets were sent home packing. In 1995, a knee injury forced Muggsy away from basketball, where he underwent arthroscopic surgery on his left knee. The recovery and repeated setbacks saw him placed on the injured list at least three separate times in the 1995-96 season. Eventually, Mourning and Johnson departed from Charlotte, and Muggsy made the playoffs one last time as a Hornet in 1997, where his team once again fell at the hands of the Knicks. His coach, Dave Cohens, advised him to retire due to his nagging knee injury, but Muggsy wasn't yet finished. Instead, the Hornets were the ones who ended their relationship by trading the point guard to the Golden State Warriors in November of 1997. His departure marked the end of an era. His time in Charlotte coincided with the Hornets' rise to popularity. The city embraced the team and its star point guard, making Muggsy a favorite among fans of all ages. Between 1989 and 1995, he ranked among the top 10 players in the league for assists each season, only ranking outside of the top four once. In the 1992-93 season, Muggsy finished the season with the NBA's best assist-to-turnover ratio. 
In the 93-94 season, he averaged a double-double, with a second-place finish in assists per game. He set a career high with 10.8 points per game in the 1994-95 season. At the time, he was the NBA's all-time leader in assist-to-turnover ratio and held the franchise records for steals and assists. Though he never was selected as an all-star or made a deep playoff run, his time in Charlotte defied what was considered possible for a man who stood only 5 feet and 3 inches tall, especially one who grew up surrounded by crime and poverty. Muggsy Bogues' career continued with the Golden State Warriors and the Toronto Raptors, where he transitioned into a mentor role, teaching younger players what he had learned throughout his journey. In the 1997-98 season, he led the Warriors in assists, but lacked the health needed to dominate the game the way he was previously capable. His second season with the Warriors brought more hurdles, including hamstring and knee injuries, as well as an unexpected bout of chicken pox. But throughout, Muggsy continued to display the same conduct that endeared him to peers and fans throughout his entire life. In preparation for the 1999-2000 season, Bogues signed with the Toronto Raptors, reuniting with longtime teammate Del Curry. With the Raptors, he played 80 games in a season for the first time since 1992-93, though he started in only five of those games. He mentored young future stars in Tracy McGrady and Vince Carter, as the Raptors began creating their own unique culture. But eventually, chronic knee issues forced Muggsy to end his career. In the 2001 season, he only managed to play in three games before he was forced out of action and never returned to the NBA basketball court. In 2001, Bogues was involved in a trade that sent him to the New York Knicks, but he never reported to the team due to his health. Muggsy Bogues' legacy digs way deeper than his playing career. Standing at just 5'3", Bogues totally defied the odds to not only enter the league, but thrive in it. His charisma and ability to succeed against all odds made him one of the most marketable faces of the NBA in the 1990s. His impact extended beyond the basketball court, with appearances in the original Space Jam movie and television shows like Saturday Night Live and Curb Your Enthusiasm. He became a cultural icon and a symbol of belief and determination. However, the focus on Bogues' underdog narrative sometimes overshadows his exceptional abilities on the court. His career assist to turnover ratio of 4.69 is the highest among the NBA's top 100 career assist leaders. Yet, if you ask Bogues, he'll tell you that his most cherished aspect of his career lies in the impact he had on younger generations. He changed kids' perspectives, showing them that size is not a limiting factor when it comes to chasing dreams. Stephen Curry, who wrote the introduction to Bogues' memoir, is one of those kids that was inspired by Muggsy's journey. As Jacob Uedi, co-author of Bogues' memoir, stated, you can't tell the story of basketball without talking about Muggsy Bogues. He truly is a one of one. Will a player as small as Bogues ever make such a major impact in the future? Who knows? But that doesn't matter, because the world will always have Muggsy's inspiring story available to them in times of doubt. But Muggsy isn't the only inspiring athlete we've covered. Dion Primetime Sanders has lived an extraordinary life. His legacy serves as a symbol of passion and evolution, and we made an entire video in order to share his story with the world. So, if you are interested, be sure to check that one out. Thanks for watching, sports fans.